Do you notice how I get all of the crummy equipment? You get the used stuff. No, the, good grief. No, listen, man. This is <laughs> she is she is high maintenance. Okay, mm-hmm. she's got her own like special. Phone. She's got her own special microphone over there. See that microphone behind you? That microphone behind you. That one didn't work for her so well. That was a very expensive microphone. Sure. She had to go to this other microphone because she can't talk into these microphones. Her <laughs> voice doesn't sound the way she wants it to sound. It's not even that. It just doesn't even sound. That's Does true. not make good. I don't know. That doesn't sound well. It doesn't sound well. The performance isn't there. I would agree. I would agree with her. The performance isn't there. All right, I got my beer. What's up, everybody, and welcome to That Dan Show with your host, Dan. Today on the show, in the penalty box, Janelle LaBelle. Across the table, we have for you a special guest, a pee pee doctor, (laughs) a urologist, and we're just going to call him Dr. Eric. (laughs) <laughs> Dr. Eric, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, if you can't tell, look at, I'm already, sw- I'm like starting to sweat here and fog up my glasses. Not normal. <laughs> I'm getting nervous looking at these questions I got to ask today. I'm running, I can't wait. Because that seems to be a theme for a u- urologist. I'm coming, I probably can't wait. I can't hold it. Well, not us, but our patients. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe eventually, but you know, for now, just the patients. <laughs> For now, you're good. Me at times, sure. <laughs> Holy moly, I am hot. I am drinking today my Founders Four Giants Imperial IPA with, uh, is that 9.8? 9.8 or 9.2% alcohol. I think that really starts flushing me. It starts getting me hot. Sure. Is that normal? I think so. Is that, not, okay. <laughs> is that know, one of I, the I'm specialty just, am questions? I, am I having a heart attack? <laughs> Do you have any idea if I'm having a heart attack right now? Because... <laughs> It could be, but that's maybe not a specialty. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to lose some pounds. I wonder if that has anything to do with, uh, <laughs> with the urology. Is that anything? Is that, is that something you have to talk to people about? Like lose a little bit of weight? Sometimes, you know, uh, excess weight can carry into urinary incontinence at times. Um, but uh, it's not the usual conversation that we have. <laughs> what about for guys? Because there are some gentlemen who are a little hefty and... The turtle is hard to find. Well, yeah, there's that is something that comes up, and <laughs> I think I think what uh, I, I think what some men don't understand or realize, I should say, is that our our penis is, is fixed inside of us to our pubic bone, and so if we gain weight, it will retract, en- engulf the penis. The, My God, the penis won't come out with weight; it will stay put. That's so it. I think that's what Janelle was referring to. So like yeah. skinny people have bigger penises in theory. They may have uh, more of an exposed penis. Really? Well, there you go. Okay. That's no, that was a technical question right there. <laughs> that was like an engineer question. I mean, that was an answer. That was a great answer. Sure. That was great. So, I mean, like what presents as a smaller penis might be a bigger penis. Sure. That's what I have. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Listen, some people are growers and some people are showers. I've heard that in the OR. I've heard that. I've heard people say Sometimes that. Like, that is. I've had friends come in the uh, that have gone to have surgery and they're like, "Listen, I'm a I'm a grower, not a shower." Okay, yeah. it's like, "Hey, dude, I'm not judging. I don't don't tell me. Yeah. I'm not judging either. You know, I believe that to be true. I don't know what the the medical terminology for that would be, but yeah. I feel like there should be one. You should create one right now. It can be Dr. Or, Eric's term. Maybe one exists. I'll just have to look into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have this is I, I had a uh, joke sent to me by somebody last night, which yeah. I thought was kind of funny. And I wanted to share. Okay, it's not a dad joke, but it's kind of in in the lines, and it eh, it's kind of has to go with uh, PB Doctor, and that's not your name, obviously, but that's sure. this is a fun show, and this is how I talk. That's fine. <laughs> so, what's the difference between a chickpea and a garbanzo bean? I think it's called a chickpea. <sighs> you know, you wreck my jokes all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. So what's the difference between a chickpea <laughs> and a garbanzo bean? I've never had a garbanzo bean on my face. Oh my! <laughs> 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 All right. Well, there you go. There you have it. 
So we I'm had commenting here. <laughs> We had a bunch of questions, and we're going to go on today because we only have you for a limited time today. Sure. And I want to get into some questions because people want to know. The viewers want to know. And these are these are real questions from real people out there that mm-hmm. may have not gone to the doctor or maybe they are not getting the answer or they're not or they're scared to ask the yeah. question in, in, you know, in, a, in a setting mm-hmm. with you across. Living in a small town, it may be a little weird. I mean, I know you personally, and sure. coming in, you asking a question. Maybe one of these are mine. I'm not saying that. That's yeah, it's no problem. I'm not saying one of them. I mean, all of them. No. But uh. yeah, no, that's, no, that's true. We deal with a lot of sensitive issues, so I can empathize with people being nervous about actually asking these questions to someone they don't know in person. Before we go into that, let's. Why don't I get your a little bit about you? Because I didn't even get into you. What exactly? So you're tell us about tell you. us about yourself. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, from Minnesota originally. I've lived here in the Brainerd area for about seven and a half years. And uh, as a urologist, I practice general urology, meaning pretty much all of the facets of urology without specializing in a particular area. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what else are you looking for? Oh, that's it. Oh, that's <laughs> so specific. Yeah, that is specific. Are you a shower or are you a no, grower? I, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Great. kidding around, all right? I'm kidding around. It's all good and fun. All right, so we're going into the questions, all right? Okay. So on this episode, Janelle, do you have a two minute with the bell today? I don't know. It's like one and a half minute. What do you mean one and a half minute? It's one and a half minute. The people will be mad. Listen, I, I was trying to coordinate them a little bit with Christmas and a little bit urology, and uh, I've got one and a half. The people aren't going to be happy. Well, we'll see. All right. So we'll our questions, number one. This is, and these sincerely are p- questions from people. All right. Question number one How do I make my penis larger? Well, <laughs> so this kind of goes like right away into the beginning. Maybe lose some weight. Sure. Right. But no, I, I could, I can say that I've seen like, I mean, anybody that surfed the internet on guys' porn sites and things like that, there's these pills and there's these other miscellaneous stuff. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just being honest here. All right. Yeah. There's a lot of different like things that you see. And Janelle actually has a story. I don't know if you even heard it before about, uh, and you know what, why don't you share your story before we, why don't you let him answer first? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, yes and no. Naturally, um, like you said, weight loss will give the more exposed penile length. Uh, there is a, a device or an implantable device uh, online. I don't have any experience implanting this, and I think it's really reserved for some special urologists and plastic surgeons, but it uh, goes by the name Panuma, uh, P-E-N-U-M-A, and it's actually a uh, like a silicone type of a sleeve that's implanted beneath the skin of the penis, which would hmm. give it a larger resting size, but it wouldn't have an effect on the length of the penis with an erection. Just so girth. It's- it's a girth. Just girth we're talking about. Just girth. Could you could you like break the bone and like put it like, you know, like <clears throat> well, put it. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I think I've heard that before. Like they have like uh Extenders? discs or something like that. Yeah, like some kind of something you can put inside there like to make it longer. Some mammals have a bone in their penis, but humans don't. Uh, the the reason a, a penis can get rigid during interaction is just because there are a couple of cavities with thick fibrous walls. Um, on the top side of the penis, that fill with blood. And as they become engorged, they lengthen, they they get larger in girth, and they become rigid. Is the penis a muscle? Well, there are muscles within the penis, but I wouldn't describe the entire penis as a muscle. Is it, so Listen, that little dumbbell that you have, like working it out. Yeah, yeah, we're, like like, yeah, my, like a cloth, it. like yeah. a cloth, like yeah. we, yeah, yeah, that ain't that's not doing that ain't it. Working it. That's not working. <laughs> <laughs> All these so, years, forty-seven so. years. <laughs> So I will say that, and I don't know if I've told you this story or not, but this is in the cities and we did have a bunch of Asian kids Mm -hmm. who had seen this online and they had ordered this flower. Now, I don't know if it was specifically like some sort of Chinese flower that they were ordering or if it was baking flour or what it was that they were ordering, but supposedly if they injected it into their penis, it was going to make their penis bigger. That did not happen. And these poor young guys, I mean, all of them, I think they were a group of friends. Sure. And they ended up just having sclerosed and deformed looking penises, you know. And they ended up having to come in, had to cut it down the middle, scrape out the entire inside, and then re-put it back around. Which then, of course, 
enhance the problem that they were trying to fix in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't uh, recommend doing anything like that. <laughs> and, uh, I would agree. A hundred percent. Dang it. <laughs> and also because it's, you know, it's a billion dollar industry, the uh, supplements uh, that are available that you see on commercials and, and so on, also it should be taken with caution because there there's no FDA regulation looking over what's actually in those. And there was a study out of Wake Forest that actually looked at the ingredients of these um, supplements and found that a lot of them contained what we call PDE5 inhibitors. These are drugs like Viagra and Cialis, mm. uh, but they were in varying quantities, sometimes greater than uh. the maximum recommended um, quantity per the FDA. So you got to be got to be wary of that. Yeah. So I was, so before I was doing a little bit of studying before the show and I was looking at some of the Amazon, you know, I was looking at some of those pills and stuff like that and the Amazon reviews. And a lot of times, or a lot of the uh, comments were, it didn't make my penis larger, but it sure made me hornier. Okay. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like, right. well, maybe that's, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's, but it kind of goes in line with what you said. Sure. You know, that, yeah, you don't know what's going to be in it. Yeah. You don't know how it's going to affect your hormone access in your body and, uh, I think it's safer to just just go talk to a doctor and, and get, the, get the prescription medication that's legit. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, on that note, I think that just kind of leads into a question of, of my own is what is the, I mean, I'm sure you can Google this easily, but what is the average size penis? I mean, what is, what, what would be, I mean, because some people must think their penis is small, but it's av- average, right? I mean, is yeah. that? I don't know if there's any uh, a, a published literature on that, you know, yeah. breakdown by by a uh, race and so on. But I don't know, in my experience here in the central Minnesota, I don't know, probably frankly speaking, maybe five, five inches. Okay. When it's flaccid. Okay. Okay. Huh. And uh, like Janelle was referring to earlier that, you know, they're the growers and showers. uh, Some people would have a smaller penis when flaccid and it's well, uh, much, much larger when it's erect. I was, I was in the army and when I was in the military, it was, it was a, uh, you know, I mean, when you're on deployment for a long time, masturbation and all that <laughs> stuff is like pretty open. No, I'm dead serious. It's really? like pretty open, weirdly open, Sure, you know, and I can remember guys like you just be like, I mean, you just be like, you know, almost <laughs> just be like, whatever. I mean, you know, it, you just kind of roll your eyes and just, just walk away. And, uh, but I can remember guys that, Cause you're open, you're walking around naked, you're in the shower naked. And I can remember guys that were like just giant, you know? And then like, but then like there was guys that had, they would have, it. this is a crazy show. <laughs> what is going on in the show? Listen, we're, okay, but there's we're guys, answering questions here. Yes, we're, we're answering that? questions, medical right. questions. I'm not a medical person. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. So this is, I'm, I'm the, I'm representing everybody else right now. <laughs> But yeah, but there would be guys that like once they got their heart on, it's just like, oh my God, you know, and these sure. guys that had these giant penises, they would get a heart on and it would be like the exact same size. Yeah. You know, it would go from like big to just yeah. now it's hard, but yeah. not. Yeah. Sure. Like surprisingly, like not what you were expecting. Hence the definition right? of growers versus showers. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah. hold on. I have a quick question. Okay. When, and I know the answer mostly to this, but when should somebody go to the emergency room? Well, you know, some, you mean for a boner? Yeah. For a boner or, or, for or, or an injury to, you know, yeah. if you're getting a little wild. Yeah. I'd say, you know, it's, it's unusual for someone to have an erection lasting longer than four hours. Like the commercials say, um, with medications, um, like Viagra and Cialis, yeah. but there are some other medications, uh, trazodone, which is a sleeping aid, um, is huh. actually, actually one of the biggest medical causes of a condition called priapism which is an erection that won't go away. And so to answer Janelle's question, if you're having pain um, or if it's been a number of hours, I would, I would seek some help. Because if you were to go without uh, right. treatment, that blood within the penis is deoxygenated and you can start to have uh, some tissue death and, yeah. uh, and erectile dysfunction after that. Did you ever see the story of, uh, I think, Dan Begarian? Dan Be- Begarian, I forget who he is. He's the guy that, uh, he's kind of a big influencer Dan Bongino? No, not Dan oh. Bongino. No, he's a he's he's a, he's a big influencer. Anyways, okay. he tells a story about how he went on this big bender, like doing coke, and he was just like popping Viagra, and he had a boner for like it was crazy amount of time, sure. you know, where he ended up having to go to the damn hospital, he ended up having a heart attack. 
Jeez. from from okay. like the cocaine probably. and the, like yeah. everything. Like, that was yeah, probably was, from the cocaine, but yeah, yeah. Well, but it was there. There is a treatment for the preprism. Yes, and uh, it's, if it's caught early enough, there's sometimes medicine that can help. But yeah. Otherwise, it's uh, aspirating the the blood out of the penis. And, that means uh, the needles coming into it. Yeah. Yep. yep. What? What? Yep. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't even know. You guys are talking about my a head needle, right now. Oh, a needle is going yeah. into the penis. To stop it? To well, pull out the blood. To get the old blood out. Oh, shit. So does yep. it like get plugged up in there? Kind of like a uh, like a cock ring? <laughs> kind, yeah, yeah, kind of. So <laughs> well, the, I, hey, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> okay, okay. Forgive I me. Like I don't it, know. I, I like I, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the, the blood is not allowed to drain through yeah. its normal mechanisms. Um, all the oxygen is depleted, and uh, the tissue all still needs oxygen, so you can... <sighs> Yeah, it leads to pain and <laughs> yeah. it can lead to erectile dysfunction if it's left untreated. Holy yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I'm like sweating over here now. Like, Maybe oh. I should be asking the questions from now but on. on the, <laughs> but on the topic of the, the rings, I think what something that is important to know is if, if those things are going to be used, use something that you can stretch to take off. You know, yeah. over the years, there's been men who have come in with metal rings on mm. that uh, ultimately they can't remove because of swelling. Oh my and God. you have to break out the Dremel and, uh, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. and try to cut it off. That goes the same with any other toys. Mm-hmm. Make sure you have some way to remove it. Sure. Because <clears throat> invariably people end up in the OR. Yeah. And if you find yourself in that situation, don't... Too far. Don't wait. Yeah, just, don't wait. Just come yeah. in and get it it's done. It's not going to get better with People time. think that they're going to wait it out and it doesn't happen. It won't get better. Nope. <laughs> okay, I'm going in number two. I've had enough. I'm like sweating now, are, from this. Are this these one. the ones that, that I sent him? Uh, I don't even know. I don't know what he's, what, what, what you sent him. Okay, he's got on. the question. Okay, so hold There's, on. One question that yeah. somebody asked was, now I'm going to put it like this because some of the question of my answer was a little bit different to this. And it was, does the stuff that comes out, is it normal for it to be sometimes clear, sometimes yellow? My answer to that was, is this a female or male? Then all of a sudden I realized that we were talking about sperm. Yeah. And not. Sure. Yeah. So semen. Not just discharge. If you have a discharge, you probably got a problem. You got an STD or something. Yeah. So semen typically has a a, a white uh, pearlescent color to it. Uh, But if it did have some yellow discoloration to it, that might mean that there's some inflammation, uh, but it's nothing to be concerned about. And um, typically it occurs as men age, but it's not uncommon to sometimes have blood tinge semen Mm. and it's rarely due to a serious cause, but blood tinge, like a little bit of blood in it. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, So it's not wrong to seek evaluation, but just to uh, help if that happens, just rest assured it's, it's rarely due to something serious. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I have actually seen it once in my life where I've had a little blood in my semen and it's just, I was like, what the hell? (laughs) Yeah. No, but I didn't, I mean like, I was like, all right, we're going to wait an hour. We're going to check again. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and it was clear everything was good. <laughs> good i was like okay i ain't going to the doctor i don't need that er bill that, that's the test <laughs> yeah that was a test that was a test that's what the doctor dan does all right <laughs> give it some time <laughs> i don't know i mean sometimes you know you're working out or you're like playing sports or whatever i mean things yeah. can happen i mean you get punched in the kidney and you might pee a little blood or something i don't know yeah. you know it's so that leads okay. on to so let's go let's go to some of your other questions on here let's pull well i i can throw i can throw out here right now because should you pee after sex i don't i don't think that you need to okay um, that's not really are you, a, are you referring to uh women yeah. um i don't even know it just was women a should women should women should you know i for sure well, well has the doctor i think there's been studies that looked at whether, as a girl i'm telling you women should <laughs> whether some of the old i don't know if, what you call them wives tales but the th- with recommendations like urinating after intercourse or wiping front to back and so on, which certainly don't hurt anything. Yeah. I don't know that they've ever borne out to uh, actually prevent urinary tract infections. Hmm. I know one time. Listen, as a girl, you wipe front to back and have, right. it just go pee good. after sex. Makes good sense. <laughs> one time I had to go pee afterwards, right? Yeah. And I sat down and I couldn't pee. And then I started panicking. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, sure. my God, whatever happens is not happening. Yeah. You know, like, and I was panicking, man. Like, I was, like, freaking out. And I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk away, give it a little bit of time, and I'm going to come back. You know, and I was worried. I was seriously, though, I was, like, freaking out. Anyways, long story short, I ended up peeing. I, I'm alive. Yeah. They didn't have to put a needle in my liver and, like, or kidney or whatever in the hell liver? it is. I don't know what kidney? it is. Oh, good grief. Whatever happens. All right. Okay, so tell me about this. So here, is it bad if it burns? That's a question. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it should never <laughs> it naturally should never burn. never burn, yes. Yeah. It, it doesn't mean it's something serious. It doesn't always mean it's going to be a sexually transmitted infection. But, yes, if you have burning, you should... Have your urine checked for an infection. Okay. What about infe- if, if well, what's a burn? A- what does burn actually quantify? Because like, is that like like spicy salsa burn, or is that like it's hot? Because I've taken a pee before know. and it's just like it feels like my temperature is hotter than than other times. Although he right? did You're have like, a fever. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I had a fever. Now. I mean, like it didn't burn, but I mean, it just was like, it feels like, you, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's just like. Oh, no, you're right. I'm making an assumption. I, I'm assuming it, that the person might mean stinging or. I uh, think so. Yeah. Like razor blade sensation. Those are sure. uh, classic urethritis, inflammation of the urethra okay. signs. And so those those would be present with an infection of sorts. Is that the same for both boys and girls? Yeah, although infections are much more common in women than they are men. Okay. Urinary tract infections. What are, some, what are some signs of an STD? Well, you know. Urethral yeah, wise, I guess. You know, gonorrhea and chlamydia can lead to an, your, uh, discharge yeah. from the urethra. And uh, it typically would have a, an odor to it and a, a discoloration. What I, so I don't I, I don't know what either of those are. So what is what is gonorrhea? I mean, I've heard it, but I don't know what exactly. What is it? It's a bacterium, and it's a sexually transmitted bacterium that can uh, cause inflammation within the urethra. Okay, but untreated can leave you sterile. Yes. Right? Yep. I, I I believe it can. I don't know the details about that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So so I I remember when I was. Uh, when I was in the military, there, I was talking to this Navy guy, and I didn't know if he was bullshitting me or not, but he said that they would go overseas, and they would get off the boat, and then they would go into, uh, you know, into these, uh, see these prostitutes, you know, over in Asia. When they came back on the boat, they had to, like, do this thing. This is what he told me. He said they would take this thing into the penis, and they would push it into the pee hole, and then there was, like, a, some sort of a hood and they would drag it back. Oh, okay. Is what he said. He would. They would make the guys do that. It to, sounds like they were doing a swab to try to culture. Oh, like that, that's what it sounds. Is like. Is that what that is? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, like a Q-tip, for example. A Q-tip? Not necessarily to Not prevent a, it, just to test it. I don't know. Well, I mean, like it sounded like he said does, everybody. Does I'm anything just telling like you this that? Is, if it's like an umbrella pulling out, is that really going to help you at that point? Well, n- no. I mean, especially if. There are, they've already been there. Yeah. I, I, it sounds to me like they're getting cultures to determine whether they have an infection or not. Huh. Or if they got an STD while they were out and about. Right. Would that That's, show up though after like two days? You know, I think, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, huh. I don't know, but probably only if they're symptomatic. Um, but um, what I was going to say is uh, nowadays, if, if someone is concerned about this, they don't have to be worried that someone's going to subject them to a test like that. Yeah. You can get urine tests now for most, you know, for chlamydia and gonorrhea. It doesn't, it doesn't require the Q tip. <laughs> so it, there's it a possibility, but scrape. I'm going to say, I'm going to call that one fact check false. I, I don't right. know. I don't know what they were doing with that umbrella device, but they yeah, might I, have I'm been gonna, getting a culture. I'm going to call that one fact check false. I don't know. I mean, that could have been to one of those things where he was, you know, 18 years old and they're like, well, if you go off the boat, this is what's going to happen to you. Sure. And he's like, you know what? I'm just going to stay on the boat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's another one. Recommendations for kids as they're starting to be more active. Because I think some people think that sex is just sex, but that's not. Sometimes oral sex can contribute to STDs. and. Yeah. As a urologist, I don't have any specific, you know, recommendations it's i don't know <laughs> you can I, wait masturbate yeah, i would, uh, <laughs> I would just... dude that is going i am that you are never gonna live that one down yeah. you are never I, I living got, that down that, that is i got that one from one of my friends at work who happens to know somebody so somebody who watches this is gonna know that that's on the you internet can forever. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna be like this i'm gonna get never right. gonna that clip is gonna be forever yeah. eternalized right there uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I defer to the parents. <laughs> good, good deferral. That is good. Yeah. That is a good one. Oh, you're oh, you're starting to get hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you? So can you catch an STD from a toilet seat? Uh, no, I, I, you, you you really generally can't. So I had I just recently had a conversation with a guy, and he was saying that his friend claimed he had an STD and he's married. And he claimed mm. he claimed that he his penis hit the toilet seat edge, mm. and that's how he got the STD. 
Well, I wonder if, you know, it, theoretically, if someone, it might be something, it would have to be something like herpes, I would imagine. You know, yeah. uh, if someone had a, an open sore and actively were shedding viruses and just had gotten off and the other person then rubbed their skin there, theoretically, I suppose that could yeah. happen, but it doesn't seem very likely. Mm. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, here, here's one more question. Um, can you do anything for aging, stress, incontinence to prevent when you are young or to help as you get older? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, incontinence in women occurs after carrying children most often because it sure. leads to weakening and stretching of the pelvic floor muscles and fascia. Wait a minute. Can I, what, wait, I don't even know what continence means. Sorry. Oh, uh, control of urine. Oh, okay. And, and incontinence Sorry. I, 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 okay. is a uh, lack of control. So, okay. so most, some women, yeah, after yeah. they have babies, they or if they run or laugh or jump on a trampoline or mm -hmm. who knows whatever, sometimes will pee a little bit. Yep. Okay. Involuntarily losing yeah. Yeah. urine. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And so re-strengthening those muscles and uh, it is really the mainstay of of preventing it. And like Kegels? And that yeah, kind exactly. Of thing? Kegel okay. exercises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can work with a pelvic floor physical therapist as well to, try oh, really? to learn these techniques. And uh, they have other advanced things like biofeedback to ensure you're doing it correctly. Is That's pretty thing, good. That's actually kind of interesting. Is it for boys too? It is that we do have men that um, unfortunately suffer from incontinence, but it's typically after prostate surgery. Okay. And, and similarly, we recommend Kegel exercises and pelvic floor physical therapy. I okay. didn't know that there was physical therapy for that. That's yep. actually kind of helpful. Mm -hmm. I want to get this one, and I want to go back to that, but I want to get the last question from the from the audience out there. And this one's, I'm not even exactly sure what this word is. Um, uh, it's C-I-R-H-O-S-I-S. Cirrhosis? Yeah, cirrhosis. Oh, yeah. I don't even know what that is. But oh, yeah. so someone asked, a uh, good fan asked, what are the causes of urine color darkness and how alcohol cirrhosis makes it worse? Hmm. I don't know if I can answer that to the level that they want, but I, th as, and I'm not a hepatologist, but when you have cirrhosis of the liver, you can have elevated levels of bilirubin. And uh, bilirubin has to be excreted. And if it is excreted in the urine, that can make the urine appear darker. So that might be what they're referring to. Um, for most of us who, who don't have cirrhosis, the color of the urine is more dependent on our hydration status okay. and how concentrated the urine is. So it, does it come from your kidney? Or is it your urine? Yeah. The, Where's yeah, it the, stored? The, is it from the kidney? Yeah. Well, the kidneys make urine and the bladder stores it. Okay. So... It, if you had cancer, for example, would that change the color? It, it can if it causes bleeding. Okay. And so one thing that's important for your viewers to know and, and everyone is is blood in the urine is never normal. So don't take the Dan approach and just wait it out. <laughs> and, uh, Give it an hour. Yeah. Give it an yeah. hour, drink a bottle of water. <laughs> right. If it happened once and didn't happen again, that's yeah. still bad. Okay. And it, it, it doesn't shouldn't. always look like blood. Well, what does right? it look like? I, I've, I've never correct? had blood in well, my urine. Visible blood uh, in the urine can look like a... Pink uh, watermelon tinge uh, to dark cherry. Uh, so, but it typically will have a red or pink appearance to it. But there is microscopic blood in the urine that you can't see. Sure. Um, and that, of course, you can't tell at home. That mm -hmm. would require mm -hmm. a, a urine test with your doctor. Which sometimes kidney stones can cause that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the majority of the time, because I don't want people to get all worried in that, but, yeah. I mean, like, the majority of the time, if you saw blood in your urine, what would that, would, like, 90% of the time, what does that normally? Oh, I don't know if I could, you, you can't say that okay. generally. Sure. It really Just depends on your risk factors, your age. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it is never normal. And when it's visible blood in the urine, we're usually able to identify where that came from, whether it's concerning or not. Mm -hmm. So, undergoing the evaluation is worth it. I have a buddy that had blood in his urine, and he's like, we were working that day and he peed blood. He came out and he's like, dude, I just peed a bunch of blood. You know, and I was like, yeah. oh my God, dude, you got cancer. You're dead. You know, that's <gasps> Real the, like, nice. I'm just, no, I didn't say that. That's what I was thinking in my head. Good I was Lord. like, sure. you know, I mean, that's my nervousness of it. But uh, he <laughs> goes to the doctor. Yeah, yeah, I am a hypochondriac, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just hold on. I, really I just am. want to preface that really with this he's all... going to think that he has every one yeah. of these problems. Yeah. I do have the all these problems now. Yeah, like, you're gonna see me shortly. Yeah, 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 no problem. That's yeah. exactly what happens <laughs> like, to him. <laughs> um, uh, your next patient, Dan from that Dan show. Say, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, Janelle, does that look pink? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, it was it ended up being an infection. Yeah, you know, it was an infection. He had an yeah. infection, and he just had to take, I guess, antibiotics or something like that, and he was okay. Yeah, that's something to preface with. You know, particularly women, if you have urinary tract infection symptoms and you have blood in the urine, 
it's most likely from the urinary tract infection. But where is like for a, for a girl or a guy? I mean, like for a guy, for example, where does the infection come from? Well, infections are from bacteria, and those bacteria that cause infections typically reside in our colons. Okay, and so women see yeah. do not wipe back to front. <laughs> right. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> well, I mean, two, two. I mean, you can go sexual play too, right? I mean, yeah. like if you're doing like yeah, back play, yeah. front play. Right. I mean, Don't that, do that either. That could be uh, a situation also. Okay. So, keep going. Right? Yeah. So, so when an infection occurs, <laughs> yeah. it's because bacteria made their way up the urethra and into the bladder and they were able to spend enough time in your bladder to cause the infection. So mm-hmm. one of the body's natural defenses against infection is frequent and complete voiding. So drink a lot of water and that'll greatly reduce your risk. Does cranberry juice actually help? Cranberry uh, supplements can. But oh, I don't know that you're going to get the levels of those that you need out of juice. So I would recommend oh, a tablet. Interesting. Okay. That is a good like question. That. that is a good question because sometimes I'll drink cranberry juice. Thinking that you're making thinking your that urinary I'm making my health ur- better. Yeah, I'm like, oh, this is this is doing me solid right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. If it's, a, if it's a, a one-off cranberry and vodka, you're probably not <laughs> you know, contributing to your urinary tract health. <laughs> Okay. In his mind, he is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so on that, <laughs> I have a problem. So this is my, this is honest to God, my concern. I don't drink water. If you know me, mm-hmm. I drink beer, I drink diet pop, and I drink energy drinks. Yeah. And that's, and, and tequila. And yeah. that's it, man. Like I've been alive for like the last 15 years drinking only that. Yep. I've had maybe, I'm not kidding you. If I've had a hundred glasses of water in the last 15 years, I would be amazed. Yeah. Right. I'm scared. That scares me though. That statement scares me. And I'm like, you know, uh, what is that doing for, am I going to end up getting cancer in my bladder or, or, or it, am I going to get. Yeah. When I, when I talk with people about hydration, it's, it's primarily focused around kidney stones mm-hmm. and uh, cause dehydration is one of the factors that can contribute to kidney stones. And hmm. I mean, although you're not drinking plain water, as long as you're drinking a lot of fluids, like it sounds that you are a lot of those drinks, are primarily water, uh, but they also are all diuretics, you know, particularly yeah. alcohol. So um, ensuring that you at least drink some water is 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 good. Hmm. Okay. I've actually had a kidney stone before. Have you? Yeah, and I think, I don't know, it was this time I was craving, I must have been craving calcium. Mm-hmm. I must have needed it. And I was drinking all of this milk. I mean, I almost was probably drinking close to a gallon a day. Wow. Which is a lot. Yeah. And then I got kidney stones. And now after that, I'm like very hesitant about. Sure. I drink a little bit of milk with my cereal. Yeah. It's very rare if I have a glass of milk, maybe with my cookies. But. Well, and that's, it's also, um, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people think that if they've had a kidney stone, they should avoid calcium. And that's, that's the, that's very far from the truth. Right. Uh, what they should have is a normal dietary allotment of calcium. Yeah. Because you do want to have some calcium in your diet to bind up the oxalates, which are the other main component of stones. Mm-hmm. And if you combine those two in your gut prior to... Time out, time out. Slow that down because I'm like completely <laughs> confused. But I, I, you bind it. Bind what? Oh, so, so kidney stones are, are, are molecules like calcium okay. plus oxalate or calcium plus phosphate. Okay. There's some other more rare type stones like uric acid or cysteine. But when people find out that they have made a calcium-based stone, they sometimes are under mm-hmm. the assumption that they should avoid calcium. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's not true because then the other component of the stone goes unchecked in which, their diet. Which oh, is interesting. what? And which, most often it's oxalate. Which is? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's found in, in a ton of foods. But there's some big oxalate-containing foods like rhubarb, dark green leafy vegetables, chocolate, teas, Hmm. Um, you can't avoid it completely. Really? Is it mostly vegetables? No, uh, it's, it's in fortified breads, cereals. It's, oh, goodness. Oh, it's all it's over the place. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's in, yeah, and chard, you know, cheese. So it, it's and in a lot of different foods. One of the things they told me was, that's fine. You can keep drinking that milk, but you need to drink just as much water to help dilute it. Right. Yeah. And if you keep your urine dilute yeah. then crystallization won't occur, huh. yeah, it's just, Stay hydrated, boys and Stay girls. Stay hydrated. Yeah. Just chemistry. Stay very hydrated. good. Very good. It is. All right. So I have, these are my, these are my things. So I have an experience. So I think we all got to go around. The, you shared a story already that your crazy story. We got to get a crazy story from you. But I have a story. I have a, <laughs> I have a story that I thought was kind of crazy. So I knew this kid, Aaron, friend of mine. Uh, he was a Marine. And he would take, so we would go to the bar drinking at night. He'd come out of the bar and the kid would 
he could pee over a stop sign. Okay, he could literally pee over the stop sign. And what he would do is he would grab his penis and he would pull it like this. <laughs> okay, he would pull it. He would stretch it apart like this. Okay. I'm dead serious. And he'd start peeing and he'd be like, Arr! and then he'd, he'd release it. And, and like, but not like super fast. So he would like start like kind of like releasing the pressure on it and it would shoot over the stop sign. Mm. Is that crazy? Yeah. Have you ever heard anything like that? <laughs> I've never heard anything like that. Before. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. I mean, it had to be it had to be shared. I don't know. I, it had to be shared. That's incredible. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I don't know how he learned it, but it was like the most amazing bar trick ever. Sure. If there was something you would you would want to tell people, is there any any advice? Anything you want to leave? Make sure somebody knows. Oh gosh, maybe based on what we've talked about so far or so far is uh, blood in your urine is never normal. Honestly, yeah. Okay. If if you see that, yeah. don't ignore it. It 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 could be something serious. Yeah. Oh okay. man, see that's now he's got me scared on the blood in the urine. I'm gonna be like, worried you about haven't that. had blood in the urine. We're not what going on. A, we're not going on a trip anywhere. I got to stay close to the oh, to geez. the hospital in case I get blood grief. in the urine. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm not going overseas anywhere. <laughs> that's right. In case I get blood in the urine. That's maybe, it's, right. maybe it's time for the bell. I want to take my hold on. I want to take my. <laughs> Is I I haven't had the chance to ask. Wait a minute, is, uh, the pancreas? We got the pancreas. What's the other thing? The gallbladder. Is that anything you deal with? No, I don't deal with either of those. I was thinking about <laughs> having those removed just in case. <laughs> like I was on a trip, you know, somewhere, what? and I was like, have I don't your need appendix. those. Appendix, uh, maybe I, your tonsils too. Appendix too. Yes, I think you might have meant appendix. You, if you take your pancreas out, you'll be a <laughs> you'll be a diabetic. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and that's that. why Daniel is not the medical yeah. professional. <laughs> Follow me for more medical advice. Plus, <laughs> do not. Plus, you'll be hard-pressed to just find someone that would uh, be willing to just do this <laughs> at request. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, sorry. All right. Listen, you can't always help it. All right. Wait a minute. There it is. The bell. It's your turn. It's your All right. turn. All right. Very good. So I've got a couple of memes. We'll see how we do. Daniel sent me a couple. I don't know. All We're right. So, try. so Janelle is like trying to get back up. So she's she's came out of the gate. She's done really good. She's found some good memes. She had a really bad week. All right. She had a really bad week. That bad. Last week, she came back with some stuff. I had no idea what she was talking about. The fans loved it. Yeah, yeah. Wait till Me, you see my Lizzo so one. You, you know, I All thought right. it was hilarious. And right. They didn't even laugh. I was like, you guys are. All right. See bums. if you can see if you can get Eric okay, to laugh. Okay. So now this is the one that you sent me. And it's very hard to see, but okay. we're, we're going to look at it. And it just says, when you are an alcoholic, but a creative one, and it's actually a tree of. Looks like beer bottles. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> yes. a good Christmas that, tree. That's yeah. it. That is. All right. Listen, when you can't afford a Christmas tree, sometimes the beer bottles are it. That's the Christmas tree we did at college. Well, right. And, if, you know, if you ever get sick of that uh, pine smell in your living room and you want old stale beer, <laughs> yeah. you know, that'd that's, be something. That's the one to go. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay, this one, of course, is a little uh, Biden one. I'd like to assure you that Britney Spears is safe on a plane home. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's that lady's name? What's her name? Brittany Griner. Brittany, Brittany Griner. Griner. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I, kind of feel, I kind of feel like that chick is a dude, but, you know. Whoa, 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 We didn't even ask any of those questions. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just, I don't know. I'm just saying. All right. All right. Hold on. You All can't right. talk that. You, just <laughs> let you know, you can't talk like that on YouTube. <laughs> Sure. All right, Apparently. that's a no-go. That's a no-go. Uh, okay, so this Christmas tree, uh, this was posted by Peter Dinklage, and I don't know if you know who Peter Dinklage is, do you? He, an actor. He is. He's, yeah. he's oh, from, from Game, uh, of Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, Game of Thrones. Right. He's, he's a little, little guy. guy. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so he said, just finished decorating our Christmas tree. Nice. Notice that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're all at the bottom. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like when, you, when a young child decorates. That's, listen, that's fair, right? <laughs> listen, I wouldn't expect anything more. I mean, you're putting yeah. yourself at risk. And that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, so uh, what inspires you to get out of bed every morning? Uh, my bladder mostly. Yes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and honestly, I mean, I feel like the dog will lay by me and I'll keep laying down. But then all of a sudden, if I'm like awake, awake, I'm like, I got to get up. That's it. I'm, that's it. I'm going to pee. Great. <laughs> okay. So here is me lying under the Christmas tree to remind all of my family and friends what a gift I am. Sure. I just want to tell you that. I'm going to start laying underneath there. <laughs> Reasonable. That was stupid. That was stupid. <laughs> Just say it. You got to be honest. That was stupid. Gosh. Okay. Ever wonder why girls don't go to the bathroom alone? Well, oh. 
Okay, so I do. Have, <laughs> I do have a little funny story about this. It goes back to Dan's. Uh, yes, <laughs> right. He, he needed a friend in the back. <laughs> now I know. Yeah. No STDs, boys. Yeah. So, <laughs> no excuses. Way back in the day, I mean, I must have been probably about thirteen. My older sister was nine years older than me, and I think we were going to Florida. And my younger sister is five years younger than me. We go into the bathroom. We're going on to Florida. What does my little sister do? She doesn't wear shoes into the bathroom or into the go to the oh, bathroom. God. Then, and it's only a unisex bathroom. Well, here comes out this gentleman. The whole bathroom is full of piss. It's full <laughs> of piss sure all over himself. the floor. It might not have been him, but I'm just saying he okay. probably knew we were out there and he peed out all over the place. Anyways, <laughs> and my mom is holding my sister, my little sister like this. Really? Listen. It doesn't come down that way. I just want to. I just want to reference that she ended up peeing all over my mom. I think and <laughs> pee went down her leg. I was cracking up. This is the only time my mom ever hit me. She turned around and smacked me across the face. Oh my. <laughs> and me and my older sister were just like. <laughs> It still was funny, but I just want to tell you, Mom, it's okay. I love you. I probably deserved it. I would have done the same. <laughs> I'm editing this one right now. I'm putting your mom and you on your fa- on the face right there for now. <laughs> no, it's not me. It's not my mom and me. It's my mom and my younger sister. Okay. Okay, so this is my last one right here, and I've got a story about this one too. Optimist, half full. Pessimist, half empty. 2022. It's P, isn't it? Yeah. Now, <laughs> I do want to just do one little story. And maybe you should do the story. Because Are you talking about the one, my story? Yeah. Okay. Because that's funny. Are you talking about with the when I was racing home? Yes. All right. I'll tell it. I'll tell this it. Is, this uh, is our closing out story. Okay. I'll tell the story. <laughs> so uh, I was, so I used to have a holster company and I was racing home. We were going to be on the newspaper that night. The newspaper people were there waiting for us and I'm racing home now. I'm from like, Minneapolis. From Minneapolis. From, um, I was in yeah, Minneapolis working, working in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. I'm racing home about two and a half hours north. So I'm racing home, newspaper's waiting there, and I'm like, I can't even stop to pee, and I had to pee so bad. So I had this collector's club. I was at some bar, and they had like these Vikings collector, these glass Viking collector's yeah, cups, yep. right? Or if you order a beer, you get the cup, blah, blah, blah. So I'm on my way home, and I'm like, I got to pee in the cup. So I pee <laughs> in the cup, okay? So I pee in the cup, and I put it down, get there, make it to the, uh, make it to the uh, uh, shop, Everything goes good. Newspaper article goes good. Blah, blah, blah. I go home that night. Now, I'm pulling a trailer on my way home. The trailer has a burned out light. So on my way home, I get pulled over by the police. And the lady's like sitting there. She's like, you know why I pulled you over? I was like, I have no idea because I wasn't speeding. She's like, because you have a burned out light in your trailer. And she's like, I was like, okay. You know, and and so she's like, sir, hand me the beer. Right. She literally just like that. And I was like, what? She's like, hand me the beer. And she had the flashlight right in the cup with the pee. And I said, I was like, honestly, that's not beer. That's pee. <laughs> and she was like, hand me the beer. She was mad, right? Sure. So I was like, okay. So I k- k- reached up, <laughs> handed it to her. I said, that's pee. And she grabs it. And she's like, <sighs> she sniffed it. She's like, yep, that's piss. And she's like, and there's another guy like on this other side of my table. He's like, it's piss. And he's, uh, she's like, yep. And I like, she's, so she gave it back to me and I put it back in the truck. She's like, what are you driving around with a, a cup of piss in your cu- truck for? Right. So I'm like, I didn't want to tell her I was pissing and driving at the same time. I'm like, right. this might be, get me in trouble. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I was at my buddy's house and he doesn't want anyone peeing in his backyard. He doesn't have a bathroom. So I peed in the cup and I didn't, I was trying to be, and she saw in the back of my truck that I had the, the holster company. Sure. And she's like, oh, are you, you and Aaron are, are, are partners there? And she's like, whose house were you at? Was that Aaron's? And I'm like, oh my God, she knew Aaron. You know, and I was like, yes, I was at Aaron's house. Uh-huh. And she knew he had a bathroom. <laughs> yeah, your story wasn't lying. No, no, no. He didn't have a bathroom <laughs> in his shop. He didn't have a bathroom, right? And I was like, and she was like, he doesn't like you being in his yard. And I was like, no, he's kind of a weirdo. <laughs> and he's single Sorry, and so Aaron. is she. Yeah, he's single and so is she, right? And so she lets me go. So I get right on the phone with Aaron. I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. I threw you under the bus. I like, said you didn't want anyone peeing in your backyard because I pissed in the cup. Anyways, that was. I don't. Yeah, that's it's a stupid story. Didn't, didn't your car smell like pee? Uh, why well, did piss all over myself? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was in the cup. It's an open cup. Oh, it was, yeah. you know, I had to make it. It was like, yeah, I mean, like, you know, a little pee on yourself, whatever, you know, yeah. you just roll. I'm, you get pee on yourself, you just like whatever. God, <laughs> listen, know, I just want to say that that meme made me think of you. I should have said optimist half full, pessimist half empty. I feel like we need to end it over Daniel, here with Eric. There's got to be a story pee, Eric's got. Or even oh. one you heard in school that you're like, oh, my God, this is almost unbelievable. I don't know. If, 
there's anything I should share, particularly being the, you know, the it's a small sure, area. But sure. No, yeah. no, 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 no. This is, oh, we don't want to break that. any HIPAA things, but like maybe like something from school or stories or something that an instructor told you or, you know, like teacher that you're like, what? Well, no, I mean, there's always, uh, I think urologists just in general, you know, and been going back into Michigan when I was out there, we always, you know, we get these foreign body cases, you know. People <laughs> rings like we talked they about, do, yeah. yeah. Things down the urethra. Oh man, I just just don't do those things. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna leave that. Don't do those just don't put stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, or wherever that is. Yeah, yeah. That is true. I've that, seen yeah. people put yeah all sorts of weird things yeah. up the urethra. Don't do that. Yeah, working in the hospital, you yeah you see these things all the time. No, no, not all no. the time. Oh. But, you know, it, it depends on, it depends on the population of the city you're in. Yeah. You know, when I was in Detroit and, and Lansing, it was much more common because it's a very populated area. Sure. Um, but, sure. But here in central Minnesota, it's not as, as common. Not as often, not as many people are slipping and falling in the shower on top of bottles. Well, let's see, that's a different specialty. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, those, those okay. Are, are, that's more uh, general. Surgery, yeah. Surgeon yeah. Colleagues. yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Uh, <laughs> believe me, plenty of stuff goes up there. Don't put anything up there. Good yeah. Don't. Do it. Don't do it. On that note, <laughs> we're going to get out of here. We got things to do. You got people to heal. That's right. You got to <laughs> fix this town. We're all dependent on you. Thank you. <laughs> we are dependent on you. Thanks for being on the show today. Dr. Eric, yeah, we appreciate thank you. your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. And guys, I don't want to ask, I don't want you to like and subscribe today. What I want is I want you to share the show with three of your friends that might need help. That's right. Three people. Share the show with three people. That's what I ask. And tell them to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks for being with us. I hope you learned something. See you next week. Peace. Bye. Okay.